two, one, go. Welcome to another episode of Sigmund's Cafe. You are tuning in to another new episode of Sigmund's Cafe. Yeah, that's right. Um, one of your co-hosts, Brandon Q. And I'm the other co-host, Dominic Cerigliano. And today we're talking about uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Not to be confused with I Don't Fuck With You by Big Sean. And Two also very similar similar concepts, right? Right. Yeah. You know, So just don't mix them up. Two total different guys. Lots of juicy deets. Wait, no, no one's going to confuse those two. Uh, they might. Did you? Uh, originally, yeah. I'm like, oh, Big Sean wrote a book? <laughs> when I first saw his book. Okay, okay. You thought his name was Mark? Well, I didn't read the author's name first. But you yeah. just saw the... Okay. I'm like, oh, dude, Big Sean, he's really banking on, off this fuck shit. <laughs> like he copy or uh, trademarked fuck? He had a huge hit song. I'm like, dude, it only makes sense for him to come out with a book explaining the whole concept. Hmm. But then it's like, oh, no, it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a lot different. Yeah, it's a lot different. Uh-huh. But, uh, any scuttlebutt? Yeah. Let's hear it. I have an announcement. Oh. Go, go, go. All right. So as we're recording this, and it started about 20 minutes ago, and it's a whole nother reason why I've made this life decision. I'm in a lot of pain right now. Okay. And uh, not a lot, a, a small amount, but it's enough to be noticeable. And I think it's because of my unhealthy living. Mm-hmm. Going on a diet. You're not going on a diet. I'm going on a diet. I'm you're losing not, weight. You're not and going on a diet. that's the no, that's the announcement. I'm going on a diet and I'm going to exercise and every week they're going to notice the difference. Yeah, okay. That's all. That's it. Yep. Dude, you just said what like every other person's in the world says every other day. But I put it all on the line on the podcast. Yeah, okay. So we'll see. I'm going to be held respon- responsible by our Six downloads this week. Thanks, guys. You know what? Actually, that's fine because cause I'm, try- I'm getting back into fit. Now I can get fit and always be like, hey, dude, can't keep up. <laughs> see, that's, what, that's what's funny. <laughs> I can shame you. Dude, shame is the best tool. See, I'm, I'm glad you said this because I'm actually going to use that same concept but on you because oh, dude, I know I love I'm, it. it. I'm going to be much more successful. That's what I need because like, I live with like my loving family and they tell me every day, hey, you fat ass. Hey, you're fat. You're going to eat more? Really? You know, and like, it's reassuring to hear that every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. So, what has that actually helped you? Oh, yeah, big time. Because I thought you said the other day you had three good days of running. But oh, then- yeah. Three straight days work. Dude, I was like, man, you know what? I just got to, I just got to, I, I got to run. I just got to do it. Just get out, get out there, get out the door, and just go. Did it three days in a row. That's more than I've, I usually go like one day and then I like rest the next day, you mm-hmm. know, because I'm like, oh, I'm taking it easy. But no, you can't take it easy. I had three straight days, hard runs like that. And then I was like, you know what? I got to reward myself three days of a nice cheat meals, you know, yeah. three on three off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so next week we'll probably go four in a row and then like four <laughs> days of rewards, you know, <laughs> just to take it week by week. You Wait, know, what does your reward system look like, though? Because uh what does it look like? Yeah. Like the food? Well, not just food, your lifestyle. So you had three days on, three days off. So your, yeah. your three cheat days, did you exercise th- those days? No. <laughs> What'd you eat? <laughs> Tell me a standard day's meal. A standard day's meal. I'll get off work. My, oh, dude, I'm so excited. My body feels great. I'm going to make a quick stop at Macca's. Okay. Macca's. And for, for all of you people yeah. that don't understand what he's saying, it Macca's means McDonald's. Yeah. If you're and from I- Australia, you guys know. What's up? What's up, Aussies? Shout out to you guys. So go to Macca's. And then I'll come home, and then my mom's already going to cook something. You know, you know, Mexican moms are going to cook food. What'd you get at Macca's, though? I usually get... McDonald's, rather. You usually get... Sometimes I get a quarter pounder with the cheese and large fries. And then you come home? And they the Mc, I always get McCafe. Okay. Got to have a mocha frap. Or, Mochas are good. Or the, some of the iced coffee drinks. And then right now, they got the spicy nuggets going on. Is this all at the McDonald's where they refuse the J Balvin meal for no, you? No, I don't even go there no more. I don't fuck good. with them. Yeah, that's good. I don't fuck with them, dude. That one has the biggest menu, though. I give a fuck about things I choose to. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know what? Should we be saying fuck so much? Because it is a pretty explicit word. Um, 
I mean, you can choose to replace it however you want. I'll probably substitute it with Frick. If okay. That's okay. Okay. All right, cool. Because, you know, I just want to be, I don't want to keep saying the F word too much. Yeah, I'm with you there. And I'm going to replace it with French. Because I know on this podcast how we, mostly Brandon, loves France. So it's I a was, nice way to tie in you know the, what? everything into the show. I was thinking about what you said, and it really hurt my feelings. But I'm not going to let it bother me because okay. I thought about more. I'm like, when did I start caring about France? It was around 2017. And what happened then? I just That's when I started learning French. And then when you learn a language, you slowly learn like, oh, this comes from this, you know? Mm-hmm. Like other examples of the language and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's where it came from. Okay, but I was just saying I'm going to use that as my word instead of fuck. Okay. So... All right. So don't get confused, guys. That's basically what you're saying, right? Yeah. So if I say I don't give a French, it means... That's fine. Yeah, it works. I've heard little kids say that. Yeah. That's cool. So your scuttlebutt... I've heard more little kids say I don't give a frick, though. (laughs) Okay. Just saying. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Um, You're going to go on a diet. That's your scuttlebutt? Yeah, that's my big reveal. Your big reveal from 20 minutes ago, you said? (laughs) No, I've been thinking about it for like a day now. You don't want to go on a diet. I'm going to go not on a diet, on a new food journey full yeah. of kale, no, broccoli. No, 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 hey, no, no. you don't want to do that. I can do whatever I want. And I kale will, is I full will. of nutrients. I'm going to deep fry it so that it tastes <laughs> better. <laughs> All right. No, I mean, I'll help you out with that. But yeah, I don't need your help. I really don't need your help. Why is that? <laughs> because I don't need your help. I know what I know what I'm gonna do. If it's my help inadequate, is that what you're trying to say? I'm not saying I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. I just need my own help. Alright, fine. Whatever. That's how confident I am about okay. this plan I've come up with. Alright, moving on. Yeah, what's yours? What's your scuttlebutt? Scuttlebutt. How's the nutritionist? We haven't talked for a couple of days. Well how I don't need it? I don't need to talk to her. I didn't say you had to talk to her. I'm just saying do you? I haven't had a need for a couple of weeks. What do you? What is the need though? Just if you have questions or concerns. Mm. Okay. I don't think I have any scuttle. Oh, so we're back to this. I don't think I have any. Sc- nothing really like bothered me this week. Nothing. No, I the mean, debate was this week. Yeah, it was this week. I was really just entertained by that. That was a good show. Yeah, wasn't it? It's well, I mean, it was good, but it was like, man, like, I, like, can we have something new? You know, like. Yeah, I felt like a rerun. Yeah, dude. Like yeah. the moderator was like they had a better moderator this time. Yeah. She was did. like she was doing her job better than the other dude. Uh but no, I mean, it's whatever. Yeah. Like I was watching it. See, I didn't watch the first one, so that was fresh mm-hmm. to me. Okay. I don't even watch them to hear what they have to say about policies. It's funny, all the people that watched the first one, I feel like didn't watch the second one. There's no need. Yeah, it's the same shit. And like for both that I saw, I don't even watch it for the policies, whatever I have to say. Mm-hmm. I'm just listening to their tone, their, like, attitude. Like, that's, you know, everything not politics is what you watch debates for. That's a good point. Like, yeah. if you if, if you really need to hear a politician go, I'm going to do this, and they're saying what they've been saying. Yeah. And then you go, oh, wow, they convinced me. <laughs> like, you just have been tuned out the whole fucking time. True. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I don't got no scuttlebutt, really. Oh, okay. Bummer. Well, let's get into this. Yeah, dude, this book has a lot of bars. A lot of what? A lot of bars. Okay. Lots of bars. Mm-hmm. This is a book I first became aware of, I want to say, maybe a couple months after it came out. I rem- I literally remember the moment I walked into a bookstore. I think I was... G- I, walk- I walked into a bookstore to buy Charlemagne's book, Black Privilege. I thought you have that on audiobook. No, but I went to buy that one, and then I I didn't end up buying it. Sorry, Charlemagne. <laughs> I got the audiobook instead. But that day, I saw this book. I'm like, what? I'm not going to buy that book. It's like orange. Like It's just begging me to buy it. Like, no, you're not going to win with me. So then instead, I bought a book by Simon Sinek called Start With Why, which was a good read. And then later on, this book, I'm like, you know what? I'll give it a try because people were saying good things about it. And yeah, it's a good book. It's a book that I'm quite fond of. And it's one of those books where you hate, like, I think for, for me specifically, I hate that this book exists because it. I'm reading this kind of like as like uh, very psychopathy. 
because I, I'm I would hear it and go, yeah, I already knew that, or like, yeah, I get that. Oh, I already knew this, you know. It, that's that's like the opposite of the point of the book, though, right? You're yeah. supposed to read it. it. It was reinforcing too much of already like what I am. So, so that's why, like, it's pretty, like, it's a good book, but at the same time, I'm like, a little like, whoa, like, uh, it felt like a little psychopathy. What made it feel psychopathy to you? Because it, it like really applied. Like you know when have you well, ever? Shouldn't this book apply to everybody though? Do you see me when you say it already it applied? Do you mean like? you already believe the belief system that he presents pretty much and lived by it. Yeah. Like I, I learned that stuff and I think you and me too, it wouldn't sh- like, cha- it's not going to like change us because we're people that like, Oh, like we already know that stuff. Like it's very, it's pretty normal for us. I think this I wouldn't book, say that for me. Well, I think, well, I think for the average person, they're going to have pushback with this book. Well, you can't really give it pushback because I, you know what this book reminds me of? It's like the, uh, the secrets opponent yes it's like yeah. the secrets like arch nemesis almost because it yeah. does say a counterintuitive approach to living a good life mm-hmm. um a line that stuck out to me about this book was about how he said the less you care i don't know if this is verbatim but what it boiled down to was like the be- the less you care the more successful you'll be yeah ironically that's so true the more you care the more you kind of start to fuck up depending on what yeah. type of person you are Dude, I remember wondering, like, oh, like, why are people, like, uh, people don't seem to like me. Like, what can I do to make them like me? Should I try this? Should I try I, that? We've all had that thought. Yeah, dude, you just push people away or you just, you're lame. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, why are people, like, it, dude, it's you. Yeah. Like, s- just stop trying. And he says that's that, too. The f- no, that's the name of the first chapter, isn't it? Stop trying. It might be. Something like that, yeah. That was a, yeah, that's a big thing. And uh, I remember you, you'd always like to say, like, dude, you're not cool if you try. I got that from somewhere else, but <laughs> yeah, it's true, though. <laughs> dude, yeah, trying is lame. Trying's not lame on certain things. You have to try on everything, but I guess on certain things, yes, trying is lame. Well, I said trying is lame because the other side of that, I'd say failing is cool. Failing is cool. You get it? Yeah. Because, it, like, trying, it's like, don't try to win, just Go win, and then if you don't, you just you fail, you lose. Yeah. But then, like, you got better because of that. But with failing comes trying. So that's why I'm saying not all trying. Yeah, and I see, like, I see. It's so just he a said word. It's it, just a wording thing. Yeah, I think that the chapter title is, like, a way to hook you in, and then he explains further. Uh, but, yeah, he goes into how if you keep failing and failing and failing, every time you should be getting a little better. Now, you know what I was thinking about during this book? The whole time, you know what I was thinking? I really, really hope Kevin Durant takes a look at this book. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Dude, come on. This is the book. I really hope someone said, hey, Kevin, you really need to check this out. Kevin Durant, millionaire, NBA champion. Uh, one, Probably one of the most unique scores ever in NBA history. Kind of transformed the game in a way, right? But the guy still to this day. <laughs> you sound like a... Uh, fuck, what's that guy? Stephen A. He's a good guy. He is a good guy. I'm just saying he's a big <laughs> Kevin Durant fan. Dude, see, I love Kevin, but like I'm disappointed sometimes with the stuff that he gives his energy to. And to this day, he cares. He gives so many, like his bag of fucks, he just dumps it all on Twitter. Yeah. Dude, you're right. what do you dude? That's you're right. you're a, a millionaire, uh, you're six ten. You dude, like I said, one of the best hoopers. He's gonna go down the well, hall of fame. Do you think that that's more of like a uh, fuck just for lack of better words um a fetish for him it's turned nah. into more of like an addiction dude no i think he cares dude do you think he's been doing this ever since like he started at texas or even before that <laughs> no and he just never gave up the act no nah, dude i think it's something that like he just he cares so much about cuz it sounds like a hobby to me dude before i remember i forgot what year it was maybe 2012 He's like, I'm tired of being number two. Oh, you know what? Can you explain? Um, I'm sorry. Before you keep on going to the viewers that don't know, like what Kevin Durant did on Twitter, dude, he just claps back at people, and he has burner accounts. He right? has burner. He has fake Twitter accounts specifically made to reply to nobody fans. Mm-hmm. He's basically he's yelling at twelve year olds. Yeah, like what he's yelling at twelve year olds and like people that pay to watch him. Yeah, they buy his jersey. It's 
crazy because like how when you're at that level of the top do you have the time and energy exactly for that's something? my it's like dude you don't even need a phone yeah you <laughs> twitter all this stuff that you're like putting your your fucks on your fricks i'm sorry it don't matter yeah so kevin dude he just wastes all his fricks on the haters you shouldn't even give them any attention if you want people to stop uh, giving you shit, you don't give them shit to give you more shit. You know what you do? You just you close the toilet seat. Yeah. You. Hey, I'm not even gonna look at you. I'm yeah. Not. And then you know why you do that? Oh, he he's not replying to our hate. Yeah, it's pointless. That's why I'm sleep. saying I think it's like an addiction slash fetish because I think he likes the that kind of interaction. Oh, you think he just likes. That's why I question whether he started before he even got real big. You're saying because he's it, been maybe it fuels him. Maybe there are people that say like, "Oh, I love the hate." Yeah, maybe he's one of those guys. That's what I'm saying. He's a, he's a difficult person to understand. So, and he even openly said like, "I still have my account burner accounts." So I, it's I just think it's so whack, dude. But I mean, that's the thing. We don't have to agree. You know, so, I mean, obviously, if that's what it takes for him to be at the level he's at and stay there, it doesn't make sense to me, but... Here's the thing, though. Like, so, I was thinking about, like, man, Kevin really needs to read this book. But I was thinking, who does this book really, like, represent? Or who is the epitome of this book? And two people crossed my mind. The late Kobe Bryant, RIP. Kobe Bryant, do you ever remember hearing any story about kobe getting pissed on twitter or kobe just even getting like if kobe got mad at any fan it wasn't i'm mad at you it's like hey dude i got five rings like you know well he was so successful well that's another point of the book um when you have something to give your actual fucks on you stop caring so much what you used to give a fuck about i'm sorry a french about sorry um and you don't have the time or energy to put any of your frenches into some petty shit that's what I'm saying. Shite. Kobe was in the lab. He was always in the lab. He even I saw a video about him talking about how like he would have to like apologize later to all his friends and family yeah. watching because he didn't wish him a happy birthday because yeah. he was too busy. Too busy. Like he, he didn't even have Frenches for that. So too. how is he gonna have Frenches for like that that kind of Twitter he stuff? He was stuck in flow and Kevin don't even know how to get there. I like but Kevin I, though. I, <laughs> Yeah, you can't. I, I I hate comparing, especially two basketball players that are completely different and their style of play mm-hmm. is different. Yeah, it's true. But I will say Kobe did have a better clutch mindset and a better just finishing touch. On the flip side, because he has how many rings does Kevin have? Two, and they don't really count. <laughs> oh, you said it. I didn't say it. I right? said it. Uh, the flip side though, we're on. We're still talking about Kevin. I think he might be kind of someone like. Uh, it's like how I always say, I'm always really happy when I'm angry. What if... That's what I was getting at. That's what you're saying, yeah, essentially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About his Twitter thing. Well, yeah, we both okay. kind of said it. Yeah, maybe he's just like... Let's see. Maybe... I don't even know where I want to go with that. I think we should just pick up somewhere else. Yeah. I think we covered it. We don't need to talk about Kevin Durant anymore. Okay, yeah, we don't. But because when I was reading, I was thinking like, yeah, this is kind of the reason why I say I'm happy when I'm angry. Yeah. Because, well, he talks about uh, another thing he brings up in the book. It's like, don't avoid your problems. Like, confront them. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone more like, I used to be, I used to be really angry if I had a problem. Now I'm like, happily angry. I'm like, I'm like happily angry that that's in my way, but happy that I'm going to take it down. Right, it's it's you know? yeah. That's another like, point. I'm I'm purpose. I'm with purpose pursuing a solution. And that's um, and that's like when you don't. Man, it's a lot to think about right now. But when you put your uh, your focus on something like that, what you're saying, finding a solution rather than your focus and bitching about it, mm-hmm. it's better overall for an individual. And that's what he said: giving less fuck. Frenches about (laughs) putting your energy into something to get yourself riled up rather than putting the positive in it even. Yeah. So you're basically talking about women complaining, right? Correct? Nope. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I thought that's what you meant by like putting your energy and like, like. Well, you said bitching. I thought you were talking about like. Nope. <laughs> I thought you were talking about bitching. Nope. You know what I mean? Nope. That's a verb. <laughs> <laughs> Bitching's a verb. <laughs> Are you sure? Look it up. I mean, let's look back at history. Dude, do we have to do this? <laughs> no, I'm I'm just being I'm being stupid right now. Shoot. I'm being facetious. It's probably gonna get cut out. It's okay. <laughs> I'm leaving it in. Let's see. The people need to know what type of person you are. What else did we like about this book? Um what else did we like about this book? Hold on. Well I forgot something. Okay, go ahead. So I thought about Kobe, right? And then I also thought about a fictional character. Have you ever seen the movie What About Bob? No, <laughs> what's that about? Dude, you ever seen that Bill Murray movie? Mm-mm. So the beginning of the movie starts out with this guy. He's pretty, like, narcissistic. He, like, doesn't touch door handles because he's afraid of germs. Oh, is that the one where he, he actually works as a director? No. What's his job? I don't know. They don't say his job. Oh. But he basically, he goes to this, ther- this therapist, right? And in, in his office, he goes, like... He like starts pretending to have a heart heart attack, and the the therapist guy is like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "If I fake it, I don't have it." You know, what does that mean? He had a lot of problems, is why he went to the therapist, right? And then he, the therapist goes like, "Take a vacation from your problems. Basically, stop giving a fuck. I'm sorry, stop giving a frick about all these <laughs> problems." And take a vacation from them. So what did he do? Dude, he became a total new person. He was trying new things. He was... What was his problems to begin with, though? Dude, he was just all up in his head with like, oh, uh, I'm creeped out with germs. I get claustrophobic. Um, He was like, there's a scene where he's at... Did you say he was narcissistic? Yeah. What was that about? He kind of felt like... there, There was a scene where like a homeless guy was walking down the street yelling to himself and like he was just walking next to him and he <laughs> kept saying to himself i feel good i feel great i feel wonderful and then he kept saying it louder and faster mm-hmm. as that like dude who's creeping him out walked by so he kind of felt like people were out to get him at times uh. uh let's see what else but basically the second the second he like stopped giving a frick and took a vacation from his problems life changed dude how do you do that though oh it's easy what do you, what did he do? Did he how can you just turn something off like that? You talking about the movie? You want to know like my method? Yeah, let's hear both. Okay, we'll hear both. My method, moment to moment. Well, don't you have like things in your head that always are there? Well, look, moment to moment, long term. For instance, today. You forgot the lens. I did. Big whoop. Yeah, I know. We could have got. Imagine if you and me just were like, "Why? Why? Uh, why are you? Why did you forget the lens?" Well, it was my fault. Like, but imagine if both of us did, because there's people where if that happened, but it was such a small issue. I know. I get like that with stuff too that are small though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But imagine it's such a small issue. But imagine if like you or me was like, "Dude, no, it's not a small issue." Came unprepared. And like, what were we gonna get? What does a person gain from that? There's not people like that, dude. Road rage. Someone cuts you off, you get all fired up. You That's rather. different, though. I don't think so. You don't think that forgetting a lens and road rage are different? No. It would be, I bet you, if we had more less time today to film this, we might have been like that. And we might have had to think of a different solution. Like, what if the mm. lens was in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> why, would a, why would our stuff be in Texas? I don't know. But imagine if it was. Nah, we wouldn't have. We would have found a solution. We would have found a solution and we just would have lived with it. That's what you should do. Because it's like, why why get mad? Here's the thing. For the rest, Here's the thing for most people. But here's the thing. Different things affect different people differently. Like road rage, I succumb to it every so often. I'm getting better, working at it. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, recovering road, <laughs> road, road, road rager. Good for you, yeah. And um, I've seen it. It gets up pretty ugly. Yes. <laughs> but... It's gotten better. <laughs> and uh, no, when that happens, though, it's like instinctual. It's not even like a choice that I have. So yes. sometimes. I mean, no, it's not a choice. You're right. But I think like you can work on. It's like kind of like going on it's, your diet. Well, here's the thing. About. 
you know? Here's the thing. Got to make smarter choices little by little. That's the thing that I'm working on. It has to become a choice. So it's like before that shit happens, I have to stop and think, hey, you're uh, trying to work on this rather than just like giving into that impulse. Dude. Because it becomes a person. Like he even says giving up habits are, uh, it's, I guess he calls it values though, uh-huh. is, um, is kind of like painful. Mm. A little bit. You're imagine like imagine you're this. Imagine this. You're slowly dying. Yeah. Well, imagine this. Imagine you get to a point in your life when you can no longer go down the same road you've been going your whole life. Let's say you're an artist, right? Mm-hmm. You just hit the age of 50 and you never sold an art piece, but you dedicated your whole life to it. You just stop to put your effort into maybe a different career choice or something. What if you have to make that? No, I would say they just were never meant to make it. Well, that still would affect the person, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, big time. So I think what he was trying to say is, like, pulling your... It would be... it's The values you hold aren't going to be that intense, but, like, for something even small, like, even parting with something that's still... It's still a part of you. It's still, like, how you lived your life before mm-hmm. and, like, making a, a positive mm-hmm. change. It's easy to be so negative all the time. Yeah, yeah, it is. And so when you try to be more positive and break that habit, it's uh, no, no, no. It, but d- I'm telling you, it turns instinctual on, at on. a point. At a point. No, no, no. Don't try to be more positive. You're right. The inverse. You have is, to do. You have to. No, do. no. Yeah. Do. You did a Yoda impression. Do, but also just don't do. Right. Exactly. You know, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Dude, not giving a frick is a huge part of my life, and I really enjoy it. That's a value you hold. He would say. Okay. Because. It's like, yo. How long have you held that value? Probably four years. Okay. Dude, when someone gets really pissed when you, off at me. But when you, what were you like before that? Oh, dude, I was a, I was a wreck. <laughs> In what way though? Emotionally. So is this something nobody saw or everybody saw? Is this I a behind the scenes it, thing? Yeah, it's behind the scenes thing for sure. Oh, okay. Like I would bottle it up, and, and then I discovered therapy, and great time. They open and a bottle up and it just... No, not even open a bottle. See, that's what a lot of people get confused. Uh, you, It's like, dude, going to therapy, it's like you go up to a whiteboard and you're like, let's break this down. And then there's a expert breakdown person there with you. Yeah. That's not judging you. That's not telling you what's right, what's wrong. They're just like... So you're telling what me... What about this? What about that? What You know what I mean? If I'm going to put... Because I love doing metaphors. Mm-hmm. So let's say... You, you're you the the building of a demolition crew, and okay. the therapist is the dynamite. <laughs> I don't think that's the right metaphor. I think it is. Why you, you, you were saying to... you're breaking it down, right? Oh. And you're the building they're breaking that's down. That's a pretty good image right there. Like, how are you going to break down? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I would say like but how are you like... going to break down a, a building without dynamite? Well, I, I wouldn't say break it down with dynamite. No. Okay. What you're talking about, I think, is the moment of growth. Okay. Which kind of uh, Mark Manson? He talks about how like his best friend died, and oh. then uh, his best friend died, and he was like, "Dude, that was like awful. Like I was de- like it was terrible for him, because he lived a pretty good life. Like he said, he was like a white rich kid, you know, had oh. everything, mm-hmm. and then his best friend died because he was drunk and jumped in like the water, and he couldn't do shit about it. Oh shit. Yeah. I didn't get to yeah. that part. Psh, wow. <laughs> Some respect there, huh? But anyways, that's like you need the growth. That's the failure part. Yeah, you know you gotta fuck up. Well, how did if you if you got a thing for a girl, and then you find out she's dating some guy, and then you go up and you and you're just like you know what I gotta I gotta let her know, and then she doesn't care. You just gotta do it. You know, you just gotta do it. <laughs> Can you say that again, like at a normal speed? What what happened? dude? I got lost along the way. Yeah, what were we talking about? Oh, shit, did you? blacked out again what what did i say something can you i i'd lost i dude i i'm seriously like i don't know you were what, speaking what, so what, fast and passionately that i i lost con- like concentration oh well speaking about growth maybe okay actually i do remember now if you got a thing for a girl okay right you know you guys got a little maybe you think you got a little connection right and then you find out oh wait she's trying to date somebody uh-huh. i gotta make my move now or never you just uh, gotta lay it on the line. Oh wait, right? so you're saying it's better to play the slow, the short game than the long game? It's better to just hey, here's your chance. 
stop waiting. Life is short. Just go for it. You know, whatever okay. happens, happens. Okay. And then, you know, you don't expect to uh, get that, you know, nice nice knife in the heart, you know? <laughs> you don't expect it. But, you know, you, you deal with it. And you you just, know what? You know, you just go get your Starbucks after. Like I was going to say, if that happens, <laughs> you turn it into a win-win. So You really do. You got to go, hey, if she says yes, boom, I'm good. But if she says no, I'm going to binge eat tonight. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. No. How do you lose in that situation? You don't. But see, that's that's a problem though. People they don't you, you can't be thinking like, bro, if it doesn't go through, I'm fucked. No, dude, you're never going to be fucked. Yeah. Go it's get like, yourself some Shake Shack and then go home and eat it. Yeah. I don't mean for this to sound very self-helpish cuz we don't know shit. Definitely not. Dude, no. We just, I, I'm in no place to give anybody. Bro, we're advice. on episode 7 of the podcast. Like, we didn't even think this we didn't even know this was going to happen this year. We didn't. Yeah. But we're like, yo, fuck waiting. Just put some shit out. Yep. And week by week, we're putting shit out. Just doing it. You know? You can't... Dude, it's never going to be perfect. Nope. Never will. Never. There's not like, oh, it's not the right time. Like, no, just go. And that leads me to a really... Another key point of the book that actually really hit home to me. Probably the one part of the book where I'm like, oh, fuck. I forgot about this. Oh. (laughs) One part of the book where I'm like... He's calling me out. Okay. I think it was the law of avoidance. Oh, shit. Did you get to this? No, but I feel like I know what what he's going to say about that. He basically said, the more you avoid something, you're bullshitting yourself. Like, stop yeah. avoiding it. Like, con- like, and you, the reason why we avoid shit is because we really give a lot of fricks about it. Fuck, you know what I've been avoiding lately and it's go, terrible? Go. Confession time, guys. I haven't paid my Kaiser <laughs> <laughs> You should probably actually pay that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know. Well, I kind of took it a different way, not in terms of my bills. It's only a week late. <laughs> all right. I meant to call on Monday, but I fucking forgot. Does your wife know this? No. Oh, oh fuck, man. Well, it's okay because it's going to get paid. It's okay. going to get paid. I'm just, I'm waiting on some money that's coming Do in. Do you need help? No, I don't need help. Okay. I was just saying it to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, when well, thank like, you for those very shallow, <laughs> no, you and empty know, like, words. You know, like when you're home, he's like, yo, dude. Like, you're right, man? Like, you, no, I'm not good. Some shit's about to go down. Oh, uh, you need backup? Like, oh, are you good? <laughs> like, you know what <laughs> I mean? They're basically telling you, I, Yo, we, I don't, I don't want to go. go. I don't want to go, but, you know. I'm I just, want you to be good. I'm, I'm concerned, but, like, are you, do you really need me? Like, <laughs> like I can go, but, like, you know, look around. Like, where you at? You know? I, I do that so much. <laughs> I mean, but it's a nice thing to do, you know? Yeah. Like, yo, you good? Okay, if anyone cool. ends with, are you good? You really want them to say that they're yeah, good. You, you want them to be like, no, yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm, uh, you know, it's like, I'm just, I had to get something off my chest. You know? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's one of those placeholder sentences that people just throw in because they think it's the right thing to do. Only dudes do it too, huh? I think so, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> dudes just can't be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the deal with that is. Mm-hmm. They're probably avoiding something. Anyways, did you have more to say? Yeah. Say about the avoidance now that, that you reminded me. Avoid- Dude, because, like, I really wanted, like, to do music. Yeah. I've taken steps. Mm-hmm. I've learned. Yeah. I know what to do. Yeah. I avoid it. Why you avoid that? Because I care too many fricks about it. Oh. You see? When really, it's like, because, look, <sighs> yeah. I, I care. Yeah. I care. Dude, I care about the podcast. Yeah. A lot of fricks. Mm-hmm. My whole backpack full of those fricks. Yep. You know? Mm-hmm. I make time for that. Yep. Just got to make more time. Um, you got to find the time. Whether it's 20 minutes or two hours. You can't be avoiding that shit. I understand that. And it's, you know, my mindset was, because uh, I recently started getting more into editing, and um, mm-hmm. I've worked harder at it. But before I jumped in, I bought some classes, and uh, I would get through, like, 20 minutes of the class, and I'd be like, all right, I'm good. I know this. Like this Today was yeah. a productive day when I should have mm-hmm. actually like watched the whole thing. 20 minutes, I'm good. I'm good. Like I That's all tw- I need to know. Yo, 23 so hours, like, I'm chilling. <laughs> 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 no, exactly. And it's like I, I put this uh, thought in my head that I was always good because like, I knew enough, but you never know enough. Shh, come on, blood. You're starting to sound like some politicians out here, man. Well, here's the thing, though. I, I realized it, and I changed. I didn't notice. You didn't notice what? You <laughs> haven't. You just said you noticed. What do you mean you didn't notice? <laughs> no, I'm playing with you. So you're you're recognize. See, this is okay. You gotta hit us with a tasty beat in three weeks. 
I talked about my diet, put it out for the world. Whoa, whoa. I no, you're trying to change. We're talking about not giving f- I don't any do, Frenchies. I don't do tasty beats, bro. What do you do? I do like intricate beats. All right. Well, <laughs> no, I'm just make, an, make an intricate beat in three weeks, dude. You got to give yourself. I'm telling the people at home, I'm going to have my jawline back soon. And I'm saying that here. Bro, I can help you get that back. I don't need your help. Have you heard of Face Gym? I don't. I don't want to buy anything like that. I, no, I, I want to lose no, it. No, it's the opposite of that. Is it a face workout thing? Yes. Yeah, I don't want to do that. You don't want to put effort in? No, not like that's that. that's what the diet part is. Yeah, that's the point, though. I want it to come without me even needing the face exercise thing. No, but you want the face exercise thing. How much is it? It's nothing. It's Instagram videos. Oh, I thought you were. it was like a product. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. They sell like little shit that you don't need, but like they sell like, you know them like... uh. Those like uh big like balls that people do abs on. Yeah, they have like little tiny ones. Oh, for your and mouth. You just go like, uh, you just go oh. like that. Because I saw this the key one. Key is to always go up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're always fighting there's gravity. Like, there's this one. There's a hook move. You just go like this. Like you know, I go like that a couple times. I got to do more of it. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's another thing, dude. I gotta the diet thing really is critical because I had those three great days of working out, and then I had these three great days of eating good food mm-hmm. and uh shows up on your face i know i was looking at our podcast and i think i got super insecure because i was yeah. watching podcasts i call i call this guy and i'm like hey man i was pretty embarrassed because i'm like you know i'm like does this guy not know how to light a brown person you know <laughs> we dom's not racist you know he and he he definitely is the least racist person in this room oh man right? nice am trump I right? line <laughs> am i right what a bar that was dude <laughs> like, he it, said it three times that you know <laughs> it's real easy to say that in a room like with all the lights off too yeah <laughs> like, there's three people like <laughs> like like everyone's like hey i can't see you but you could see me mm-hmm. he real easy for me to say he doesn't this. have to see the expressions <laughs> on the oh no, dude oh dude what a bar I can't wait to like watch that in like twenty years. Yeah, when it's not relevant anymore and yeah. he is gone. Dude. What are we talking about? Yeah, where where what were we talking about? We're talking about avoidance. You're oh, you were challenging me for a beat. That's right. And you know what? I've learned enough to actually do that. That's what I'm saying. You gotta gotta you get just gotta it. buckle down. We're gonna make it the show intro. Make the show intro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, okay? Let's see what happens. All right. Because, like, and here's the thing. Before I came back from Mexico, I was sending you guys beats. Yeah. I was. Uh Uh-huh. They weren't long, though. No, they weren't long, but I was, like, I was, like, proud of that shit. It was good. I'm, like, blah. You used it on the app, right? Yeah. That was good, yeah. I remember we listened to it, and we're, like, we're both, like, yeah. Yeah. Me and our... Never mind. We'll we'll bleep it out. Don't worry. Yeah. Dude, the law of avoidance, like... Just, I took that honestly. You stop bullshitting yourself. Mm-hmm. The day's going by. You're not doing it. You know what? The other thing too, I really love. Do I love to draw? Love watercolor. Remember, I've been drawing, but it's like yeah. oh, part time, part time. You Make know? it full time. You just gotta like throw it in there. It mm-hmm. takes, dude. Everything takes effort. It takes effort and it takes time and it takes um. You know what I found is the hardest part of learning something new and trying to like stick with it is uh. The consistency of focusing on it at, at consistency lo- for long periods of time. Yeah, like it's not just like oh, well, I'm doing this today. It's like you can't just work for an hour and then take a three hour break because I'm yeah, I used to do that I'm notorious calls, for yeah. that. Dude, I remember my uh, my professor. I told him I used to do that, and he's like, "Why don't you just do like read or study for in twenty minute blocks, and then take like fifteen minute breaks at the most, or take no, I think I took five minute breaks, and then like it made me hella like on that shit." I'll try that. I'll try you know? that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you just got to break it down, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You break know what? Down. There's another, there's, there's maybe two more bars I want to get to from this book. The first one, you're not special. Yeah, I that one stood out. I love that line. I don't know. Maybe I read this, like, maybe back when I read it for the first time, maybe that's where I, it really stuck in my mind. But I really love that. It's really reassuring, too. Dumb. You ain't shit. I know. You're a piece of shit. Okay. You're not special. Yeah, I know. I already knew that. Yes, you did. But that. Hey, hey, I'm not. It same applies to me. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to do this? No, you don't have to do it. It's okay. No, no, no. I think it's it's a good no, exercise. I, well, you can do it, but like. Hey, I mean, Brand. I, hey, you're shit. 
Okay. You you're not you're trash, garbage person. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> all right. Yeah. That okay. that was good. You missed a couple that my mom and dad say, but it's fine. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were those? You, we're ashamed of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, nah, I can't. <laughs> I don't carry the burden of being your parents. So. <laughs> no, but uh, dude, no one cares if you're a good person. That's what I. That was the first thing that crossed my mind when I heard that. Because you know how everyone, uh, maybe largely in, in the United States specifically, why are you out here trying to like moral, like put your morals on everyone? Like, oh, so- you know why? Huh. He also says it in the book. Oh, I think he does. You're right. Um, being God, outraged is yeah. actually a pleasure. Yeah. So. You know, it's kind of like, it's very convenient for you to be mad right now. And it's been escalating throughout the years. Your pleasure. So, you, yeah, you're basically saying like too many people are getting pleasure out of this outrage. And then they're being, because they're well, outraged, some people they're getting can't, rewarded some for people the good have person. Some, Yes, but some people have the right to be outraged. It's the people that are faking it and aren't true to the cause. Mm-hmm. I think that. And let me tell you something. I think it was the first time I got Starbucks back in the United States this year. I was with you. Yeah. And I went in. I'm like, whoa, dude, I have never felt. I've never gotten this great service in America anywhere than at this Starbucks. And I could just feel the white guilt dripping everywhere. <laughs> It was oozing on the Dude, ground. I, first of all, I'm walking up to the door. I'm clearly the only brown person. Someone's like, oh, after you, sir. Whoa, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is, I don't get called sir in America, you mm-hmm. know? And then uh, I give them my order. They mess up my order. And, like, it's a huge deal to them. Mm-hmm. Like, the kid that made my, like, uh, drink, he was like, oh, my, I'm so sorry. I'll get right on it, sir. Whoa, again with the sir. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> and then I just step back and he's like, I'm making it right now, sir. <laughs> like, let wow. me know, like, yo, like, I'm on it. I'm on it. You know, it's like, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. You know? I remember that. I was waiting in the car. Dude, and I was, it was pretty, Took forever, though. Bro, it took forever and they knew. He it put love forever. into that Dude, one. <laughs> I could not believe it. It was the best service I've ever gotten in America. And all it took was some racism. Hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Some good old eh, I don't even know That's not racist But So do you think All the outrage is good then? No I think it's bullshit Because it sounds like It's affecting you positively though And isn't that what The yeah, cause actually is it's about? It's affecting me positively, positively Does it feel fake? Oh yeah big time It doesn't feel real? Yeah It's so easy to be fake with people dude Cause Right you, It's just moment It's like yo I'll w- win this moment over And then you put them to the test yeah, like, I really appreciate that. Can I get, like, your contact information to the thank you or... Um, n- no, you're a stranger. Wait, you know? whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up a little bit. I'm okay. a little confused where you went. What do you mean? I'm just saying, like, say a person's so nice to you. Because you really... If you're being nice to someone, you're being genuine with them. Obviously, it's like... In, like, the, its purest form, yes. Yeah. You're not Because it sounds that, like it's you're, different. You're not going to want to see that person ever again? W- what? If no, you, no, you no, you would want to see it, that person again, wouldn't you, if you're being nice? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if you're so nice to me, and then I go, wow, like this guy's really nice to me, or this woman's really nice to me. Well, let's be let's let's back up. It's there's I'm a difference not between romantically. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm what saying, I'm trying to say. It sounds like they were overtly nice to you, rather yeah. than just being genuinely nice and yeah. just like normal. I guess genuinely nice would be like, as you're opening the door, I just happen to be walking in, and you like squeeze it open a little more. Yeah. You know? Okay. Because that's like, like, don't go out of your way to, like, com- try to convince me you're not a white devil. But you do know? you not <laughs> like this overt ni- this nice system? Would you rather have him close the door on you? What's better? What's better is just back to normal where you don't even realize I'm there. So he closes the door on you? Yeah. That's better? Yeah, because it's like, I can open the door too. What about I'm if. Not, I'm not special. Don't I treat know. me like I'm special. You know, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like let me be a piece of shit too. Okay, okay. No, I mean, so we're what you're saying is you just want everyone to be a piece of shit, and you want to be treated just like everyone that's a piece of shit. You want no special treatment. I'm basically saying no fuck, treatment, really. I'm basically saying fuck extroverts. Is that okay? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. W- don't be nice to me. You don't know me. 
I'm not special. Why are you treating me this way? Because I'm not going to treat you this way because I know you're not special. Right. So then don't get upset at me for, for thinking I'm being a dick. Uh, when I'm really okay. just being a genuine human. Okay. 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 All right. Excuse me. Um, he also goes into that chapter about how like your problems are actually have been occurred a million times over. So your problems are not special. No, and you not. Sh- everyone, and you, everyone deals with it somehow. And you shouldn't take it as life ending because it's been solved a million times in the past. Yeah, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't That's the out, worst thing to do. Don't put out this fake narrative about who you are mm-hmm. and then try to get sympathy. No. You know what? Oh, see, I'm being reminded right now of like a really, I think Chris Rock said this. If you're on the highway with a flat tire trying to like call down cars to help you, you think cars are going to pull over and help you? Here's Probably the, not. Here, and here's the other scenario. If you're Depends what part of the country you're in or what country okay. you're in. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. But also, if you're on the side of the road and you're changing your tire on your own, someone's probably going to pull over and help you. No. No yeah. way. No, no, no. Why would you help someone that doesn't okay, need wait. help? Okay, wait. I don't know if it's... Okay. You're trying to call down a car. I think... Okay, I may have said it wrong. Chris Rock says, the guy pushing his own car... That's... That's... that's that sounds more right. The guy pushing his own car, someone's probably going to go over and help you. If you help yourself... Instead of waving, help yourself first. Ah, uh, yeah, that's because honestly, you m- you might not even need the help. Maybe true. in your head you thought you did, but you didn't. Oh, that is good. Chris Rock said that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, you said <laughs> so. Chris Rock. Chris Rock said that, and I said that. About you're Chris regurgitating Rock it. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for the advice. That's what I'm here for, folks. Also, thank you, Chris Rock. Yeah, um, actually, yeah. Chris Rock is just a brilliant mind. That's really. I mean, <coughs> I kind of already knew that, dude, but like that's what I'm when you but hear that's it, what Chris it, does it though, hits. Bro. Yeah, that hit. Like, remember Chris Rock too said the whole thing about the bad apples. No, he was like, yeah, "Is this they, in his stand-up or is it in yeah, an interview?" It was in, I think, his latest stand-up. He was like, "Yeah, they say cops have a few bad apples. Some jobs don't get to have a few bad apples." Yeah. Have you heard that one? No. And then he goes on to say, "Yeah, like pilots. <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> yeah, we just." You know, we got a few bad apples of pilots that just didn't land the plane today. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it just don't work like that. No. Oh, oh but do you do you remember that Denzel movie where he was a bad apple, but he also landed planes? It was called, I think, oh. Fly. No, it wasn't called Flight. Flight, yeah. Oh, he, I forgot. He, he turned it upside down and did dude, the whole thing. And, and then Denzel. The oh, rest man. of the movie was investigating him because he was drunk. Yeah. But the thing was, Denzel drunk is better than everybody else sober. Dude, love that. Yeah. Kind of, honestly, I'm kind of better when I'm drunk. No, you're not. I'm not? No. Are you sure? When you, when you say better, better at what? Oh, I definitely feel better when I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a completely different issue. Okay. What What do you mean? What What are you better at when you're drunk? Bro, I remember... I remember, I think, I think when uh, we like had a night out one time, I forgot who else we were with. I remember like, I was like pretty, I was like ready for the night. I was just like, oh, I feel strong. Yeah. You no, know, dude, I felt like I punched to a brick wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I probably could have. No. Like, but I think I believed I could have. And because of how strong my belief was. You would have broken your it hand. It was going to happen. No, your hand would have broke. I, pro- I would have broke. You have no training I would have broke my hand by breaking the brick wall. Nope. No, you wouldn't have. You don't know that. No, I know for a fact. It didn't happen, though, so no, you don't. There's a brick wall right there. You want to get some... I don't really we feel were like drinking it. rum that night, so we can like just it. get rum. Dude, we were telling your wife, dude, we really got to fight. I know, yeah. Next time we have a night of drinking, dude, we got we to gotta throw it some hands. It has to be Jack Daniels, too. We agreed on that, we right? gotta, Dude, we got to throw some hands, bro. If it's not Jack Daniels, it's got to be Captain Mo. Yeah, the last time me and you almost fought was... You were drinking Jack, and I was drinking Captain, and that's what fucked it all up. Oh, yeah. It was off. Yeah. We, we both, both have to drink Jack. Yeah, we both have to have the same. That's a man's drink. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to cut that out. All right. I mean, yeah, just don't. Yeah, just insult women, okay? Sure. <laughs> it's funny because Jelly can drink me under the table with Jack Daniels. Really? Mm-hmm. Dude, I continually get surprised by how cool your wife is. Well, have do you know this Filipino drinking game that they play that I think has like upped her her bars and drinking? No. Okay, it's not even a game. It's more of like 
it just feels okay let me just explain so let's say there's four of us right mm-hmm. we couldn't do this now because of covid but if it wasn't covid uh four of us in a room one cup okay you fill the cup up with jack or whatever you're drinking and you take your shot take a sip of if you want your chase that you have like mm-hmm. everyone has a thing of coke you just pass the cup over next next and let me tell you the time increments between are so minimal it's like boom 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 that's what it feels like it's like we're all just talking having a good time and then it comes to you oh man and if you if you uh wait too long to drink you get shit they'll oh, wow. they'll start they'll start screaming tagalog and Bisaya. it's a you. very oh dude it's like a shame game it kind of is yeah dude i love those games it's like you're holding on to it too long but it's all in tagalog or Bisaya, so i'm all confused yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> and on, <laughs> so that's how it always oh, goes. Oh, dude, yeah, we got, we definitely got to play that one time. <sighs> yeah, okay. I don't like that game. We'll do it like we'll designate like a weekend, you know, because recovery. If you know what I mean. No, it needs to be either a Friday or a Saturday, and then the Sunday you can rest because yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, it's dude. Like, it's intense, man. <laughs> it like, it we'll is plan, fun, but we'll plan around it. Like, I don't know if I can hang anymore. Yeah, I'm more. I've become slowly become like a nice wine guy. You know? I have too. You know, I like wine. Like nice little wine in a glass, take a s- sniff. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, people drink their wines differently. That's not how I drink it, but I just like a nice refined wine. Okay. You know well, saying? what do you drink? Do you drink red wine? Do you drink Cabernet? Do you drink? I do like a nice white. I'm trying to. I want to learn more about red wines. How come reds? I don't know. I just am drawn to it. What What specific do you know? Does don't they say red wine is better accompanied for like a meal it depends dude because you can have wine with like whites are good with fish i think in white pasta Mm -hmm. and then reds are good with meat and um i think red pasta i mean red sauce there's two points i think we could get into to close it out yeah two bars i also have to pee two bars where is it our struggles determine our successes and then the other bar, if we are unwilling to fail, then we are unwilling to succeed. Oh, yeah, because if you can't... Which one you want to tackle? Well... Both. Versus. Why don't you choose? Our struggles determine our successes. Okay, yeah. That is a bar. Just hits you right in the face. What's the verb? Determines? Our struggles determine our successes. Okay, determines. Okay. Yeah. Want to unpack that it one? reminds me of so there's a book by Ryan Holiday. Literally, it inco- the title sums it up. The obstacle is the way. <laughs> this is why whenever like you and me with the podcast, or or whatever situation is going on with you or me, if there's like a problem, I'm like, yo, this is how 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 I know it's a good sign. The fact that there's any obstacle, any problem, that struggle means it's going to be successful. There's never a straight path. You, nothing it's like they say maybe there pressure is make, pressure makes diamonds it's true nothing uh you can't be the best player in the world without competition in okay. basketball that's yeah you know we got a no league lebron right now best player on the planet right how do we know he's the best because you got kd you got jimmy buckets you got Giannis. you got Kawhi. you got Paul George. <laughs> nice. You got Steph Curry. You got all these guys. LeBron's still the king. Yep. Of two eras. Since 2003. He didn't win any, though. No, he didn't. But he's winning now. This is his era, and this next era will be his. Yeah. What I'm saying, though, is look how many years LeBron's been struggling. Mm. Or how he did struggle. Yeah. A, a big argument for... I bet you in his mind of why he's the GOAT is he goes, oh, I've been to the finals 10 times and I've lost, <laughs> yeah. I've lost four. He's probably saying to himself, MJ didn't get here 10 times and MJ didn't even have to deal with the pain of defeat. I don't think he needed even to uh, say that to himself. I think he is saying that to himself, though. You think so? Yeah. You I, think he compares himself to MJ every day? Yeah. I think he, he honestly believes he's the GOAT, which is... I, I understand his logic, but I don't agree. I don't... That's what I hate about calling one player the GOAT because there's five positions. 
three are similar and two are similar. And they're kind of in, I mean, LeBron's kind of fits into all five. Yeah, I know. That's, that's Michael why Jordan it's weird. fit into that's three. That's why this like LeBron MJ thing is just too weird. Yeah, that's why it's it's honestly much easier just to be like LeBron, you're number two. You came you came next. Yeah, it's more of a respect thing yeah. at that point for a lot mm-hmm. of people. But it's like it's easier to do Kobe and MJ because they were more similar players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's anyway, get back yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah. Our struggles determine our successes. Dude, anytime you're feeling down, you're in your bottom. Yeah, you're gonna make it. Not, no, not always, dude. No, but look, no, no, no. Okay, you are because even if that's the point of like, oh, I failed at this thing. And hey, that's what the about the it? person that hits the bottom and then just continues to dig deeper? They're not done. <laughs> so once you hit your bottom and you realize it's your bottom, you're saying you have to realize it. You gotta have. You just gotta lose. You gotta lose to win. Which You've been is saying why that for years. I love to lose. I'm a great loser. I'm so good Dude, at Dude, you've been saying that for over 15 years. I love losing. All the way back when we were like 12-year-olds and we didn't know any better, too, which is hilarious. What's the term? Because when you lose, you get a clear picture of you how you lost. It's true. You can't you can't. It's like it goes back to the whole law of avoidance. You bring well, you definitely are able to identify your weaknesses better when you lose than when you win. You got to expose yourself. You got to be judged. True. Judgment day. You need a judgment day. Mm-hmm. Always need that shit. Yeah. You got to lose. You got to you got to you got to ask that girl out and then she's going to say no. And then you're just going to stop talking to her for the rest of your life. OK. You know? Yeah. And then you're not friends anymore. And then the friendship that you had before just goes away. Yeah. <laughs> That's some weird energy right now. I'm just, I'm it's just like giving coming examples. into my area. Right I'm just now. giving examples of stuff I've heard. You know. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I think so. And you stop talking. I feel weird now. Like all your energy came over here. Actually, I don't think that one happened to me. Okay. I think that's like a just a generic scenario. Yeah, yeah, that happens to tons of people. And that's fine. And that's you're not special. You're not special. It happens all the time. Yep. I dude, you know what? Speaking of that, there was a girl in college I had a thing for, and then it became messy, and then we just never was the same. And I remember, uh, like a, he, this guy was a he was a year older than us, so he was kind of like giving me advice, and I was explaining to him the situation. And then he's like, "Oh yeah, dude, just let it go. It's never gonna happen." What? <laughs> like, yeah. No, it it, it can't happen because of. And I remember like looking back, the way I was thinking was like, "I'm unique." I'm special enough for this person. Mm-hmm. No, you're fucking not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he, he was just like, yeah, dude, just, you know, don't talk to her ever again. Like, it, it's easier that way. Like, you know. Yeah. He was right. No, it's not going to happen. And hearing that, it's like, what? What? Yep. No, you, it's 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 a good thing. Yep. Because when you think, it's like, we take this we take this podcast one week at a time. We don't know what's going to happen next week. We don't even know what book we're going to do. We don't do. even know what book we're doing next week. That's part of you. Just get better. You, you rise. So, what would you say? Because w- now we have conflicting views from past episodes. That's okay. yours. Yours. I know it is because <laughs> I know how we have flip flop. Yep, flip flopping. Flip is flip flipping's flop. good. Flopping's flip. good too. Flip um, flip flops. Uh, so what would you say to someone listening that we said that you have to believe in yourself and almost. You c- it could almost be construed as believing that you are special by being delusional and mm-hmm. pursuing what you're doing and believing in yourself and knowing that you're the greatest versus knowing when to take a step back, realizing you actually aren't special. Wh- how do the two coincide oh. with each other? Oh, that's easy. The okay. difference is ego. Mm-hmm. Go on. You can be delusional and stuff, but that's like a placeholder. Like you're really not delusional, but you're doing that so you can keep doing this. But you really know... You can fail. Like, you can be delusional enough. You you can be delusional enough, and p- whatever you're doing, you're pursuing, do it. But if you fail, objectively, you failed. And then you just, your delusion is going to help you keep moving. It's so going to help you, you move on. Would you say, when yeah, when you hit this point. But it's ego. That's the main thing. Ego is a difference. If you, if you have an ego, you can't accept that defeat. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right. need to accept it. 
Right. You can be delusional. You could be, I'm not shit. I ain't shit. I'm not special. But it's ego. Well, yeah. here's the, here's to tie it back into the book. Here's what I think. Sorry, I interrupted you, but no, no, I, I was going to lose the thought. Um, if you, finding the balance kind of weighs where you have to be delusional, believe you are, I guess, a little bit special to a point. You have to, if you want to start anything in your life, you have to believe you have something that someone else doesn't. Yeah, true. But so that's just being yourself. Just being yourself, okay. right. Everyone yeah, yeah. has that. But I guess when you pursue that and when you realize your failure, you need to realize, like you said, ego, you're not special in getting that failure either. Like no one, everyone's going to watch your failure and forget about it because there's been oh, so many other dude, people that have done the same thing. I'm so glad you just said that. I'm so that, That's probably where we're going to bring this to a close. Nobody, one, you're not special and nobody literally cares. cares. Right. Like, here's the thing, like, well, like when the thing about when I get like fat sometimes and like, I'm like, all right, let me get back to the weight loss thing. Right. I can do it. It's not a problem. But the little struggle you deal with is as a fat guy, oh, everyone's going to see like, I'm obviously a fat guy out here trying to lose You're weight. literally wearing your insecurities. Yeah. Once you get past that, who cares? Because I, cause the flip side, when you're in a car watching someone run, observe yourself. Did you even look at them? Mm-hmm. Do you even remember their face? Right. And then even if you saw them and they saw you, it's like in l- probably less than a second mm-hmm. and it's gone. Well, that's the thing too. If you see someone that you haven't seen in a while and they, they will notice your weight gain, it's going to be like, okay, you're going to not probably see that person for a while anyways. You so. already didn't see him for a while. It's probably going to stay that way. Right. <laughs> hey, it's Reggie. Oh, all right. There he is. What's up, bro? He's back. Okay. He's got energy now. All right, should we uh, end it there? Yeah, let's uh, let's bring it to a close. Um, That's I have to close it because of the frame. okay. Like we we're saying, n- you're not special. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You shouldn't be doing anything t- for the uh, validation of anyone. And the worst that anyone could say to you is, "You suck." Well, they can they could say a lot worse things actually. Yeah, they could, but it's gonna if you suck like that's. Wh- you got to translate it into... And maybe terms. maybe you do suck. You know, maybe you do. But, but that doesn't mean you should stop. Yeah, and and don't take all the words that me and Dominic are saying. If you look at us and go like, you know what, I I fully believe in what those guys said. No, don't do that. Don't praise us. We ain't shit. We're not even... We're, we're not giving you advice right now. We're just saying... We're, no, we're, regi- re, we're basically regurgitating his book. Yeah, we're putting That's it why we're here. in our own language. In our own experience terms. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Just yeah. so keep on sucking till you don't suck. That's keep what on he sucking says. Until you don't suck. That's what he says. So basically, yeah, just let it bust. No. <laughs> well, that's what you said. That's what you said, man. That's what you said. I mean, you know. Yeah. All right. That was a good that was a good alley oop. I didn't know I tossed. Yeah, you didn't. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta stop tossing these salads, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. Oh man, well, do you have a dream catcher in your room? Yeah, it's not big enough though. Oh, I'm having nightmares. That's the problem. All right, well, All right, man. Yeah, it's a different book we had this week, you know. Yeah, we like to dive into different books. I what? wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a self help book, but people would probably classify that is, as. Yeah. But, uh, definitely look at it, you know. Yeah, it's a cool set. Only check it out, guys. I give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, I give it eight point five. But I give it a two out of ten on the cover. Okay. That orange is just gross. It's not fetch at all. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say to that. I got to pee really bad. Can okay. we uh, close this? All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Thanks all for right. listening. Peace. Bye. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I, I really got to pee. No, it's, <laughs> we're fine. Can you uh,